Hey, this is Guy from New Plastic, and today we're going to make fully procedural terrazzo textures. Yes, all this you see on screen is 100% procedural. I also made two new packs with 38 different terrazzo textures. You can check them out on my Gumroad and support the channel. They're cheap, they're beautiful, and they're fully procedural. And I love procedural textures not just because they have infinite resolution or because they're endlessly tileable without any repetitions, but mostly because they allow so much creative control. It's truly a way to express your creativity with an otherwise pretty tedious system that is the node texturing system. You can also support the channel on Patreon where you can not only get tutorial project files, my own personal project files, free products, early access to stuff and exclusive material, but you can truly be part of this movement and help the channel grow and get better. And if you want to keep it all on YouTube, you can now become a YouTube member. For a few bucks a month, you'll get all the benefits patrons get as well as these cool badges that evolve over time. I haven't made pixel art in forever, so I really enjoyed making these badges. So thank you all for the support. Shout out to my amazing 10 patrons, Spencer Clark, Abhishek Singh, Lynn, KV Davy, Sean Austin, Tech Yuan, Elad, 3D Monkey Biz, Taylor, and Marcus Arnold. You're now officially a part of the family, and this family comes before everything. It's a thing of honor. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, been watching The Sopranos again. Anyway, follow me on Instagram at Ojeng. Subscribe, hit the bell, share, comment. Let's go. So terrazzo is basically a composite material made of pieces of different rocks mixed in a binder material. There's different looks. Uh, some have more uniform pieces. Some have different large and very small pieces. Uh, some have more dense pieces versus others that are more sparse. And also different types of rock pieces have different details on them. The pieces don't overlap and they have distinct individual colors. That's going to be easy to do in our texture. The pieces also have irregular edges and they're not very linear. That's going to be a bit harder to do. We're going to use C4D's Voronoi noise and the only issue it has is that it has very perfect and linear edges and there's no built-in way to distort it in Octane. There is one OSL script by Rohan Dalvi that can distort UV textures but when I tried it it was extremely laggy and unresponsive so I decided to not use it even though it gave really awesome results. All right let's start. So I have a simple scene here. I got this light coming from the side just to kind of uh, diffuse the shadows a little bit. I got an HDRI with the light source coming uh, from the right, as you can see. So super simple scene. Um, I got these uh, settings. You can kind of pause and see static noise checked, you know, just kind of like basic stuff. Exposure is a little up. Highlight compression is up, you know, linear neutral response, 2.2 gamma, denoiser enabled and very important in settings and cinema 4D shaders, enable use OSL for C4D noise and disable enable C4D shade baking because we're going to be using C4D noise. And I have this kind of spline thing that I put in a lathe object just so we can uh, look at something. Okay, so let's add a material. I'm going to immediately reduce the metallic. We don't need any metallic on it. I'm going to set the IOR to 1.48. It's about IOR of marble, but you can you can play with it. Now, I'm going to add a C4D noise and another one. The first one, I'm going to do Voronoi 3, and that's going to give me these kind of separated Voronoi fractures. And the second one is going to be a cell Voronoi, which is going to give me these connected Voronoi fractures. I'm going to set both of them at 20% scale. Then let's plug the first one. And what I want to do is I want to crank up the contrast so that we're only left with uh, white pieces and black borders. And that's going to act as a mask for the bottom one. This is going to be like your main pieces, right? Now let's play with the seed. Till we find something we like. That's cool. Let's copy that and paste it into the bottom seed. And let's plug it in and look at it. It's beautiful. And I'm going to just kind of play with the contrast a little bit, but we want all these shades of gray because uh, that's going to allow us to give different colors to each piece. Now the thing is both of them are aligning perfectly because they have the same seed, the same size. Cool. I'm going to add a mixed node. I'm going to plug the top one to the amount and the bottom one to texture two. Then let's plug it into the albedo and you can see that the top one is masking the bottom one uh, where the white shows the bottom one and the black hides it. So that's a good start. Let's add another noise, but this time octane. And we're going to plug it into the texture. And that's going to be the texture in between all the pieces. Let's set it at XYZ UVW because that's going to mirror the texture space as the C4D noise. It's kind of the same space. Let's scale it down and let's uh, change it to chips type. And I'm just going to crank up the contrast and just play with the settings a little bit so we can get kind of more of like tiny chips texture on it. Now let's add a gradient node in between the noise and the mix texture and another gradient node here. And let's play with the first one. So I want that kind of creamy background look. So 
to give like two shades of this cream color. So we got like this kind of cream color with some specks in it. And here we're going to color the pieces. So the gradient node is going to color the whole grayscale pieces that we got. So I'm just going to kind of choose a few colors that I think fit. You can look at examples. I mean, that's always good to look at references, uh, but this looks cool to me. Yeah, that looks pretty. And obviously you can do whatever you want. I mean, you know, as long as it looks pretty. Now let's add another octane noise. And I'm going to use that to give a little kind of variation and a little bit of like subtle white streaks. I'm going to set it at chips, play with the contrast, play with the gamma and scale it down a little. And you can see that we have like these tiny streaks. I'm going to apply it on the add node, plug our color system under it. And you can see it added those kind of just white bright streaks. And that's cool. That's like, it's like a nice little extra texture. And you know, a lot of this is going to be now just adding extra texture to get a bit more realism out of it. So it won't be so graphic. Now I'm going to add a multiply node and I'm going to use our top noise mask to hide all those streaks where the cream color is. So if I plug that into the multiply and I plug the streaks into the multiply as well, now you can see that the streaks are gone wherever the cream color is. And if we give it a light blue color, you can see that it works really good. Let's play with the contrast and the gamma. Maybe get a bit more detail if we up the omega. Yeah, this is, this is really cool. I like that a lot. Nice. But actually, I'm going to copy these, drag them out and just kind of save them for later because I want to add a different type of detail here. I'm going to change the noise to circular and play with the gamma, maybe invert it. I want these tiny circular dots type um, texture. And just play around with the octaves and I want like more uniform circles, scale it down. And yeah, that's pretty cool. So you see now like you can play with different noises and get different uh, details. And it's important to look at references and also just kind of get creative with it and try whatever you want. Now let's add another noise. And again, we're plugging the XYZ projection to all of our noises. And let's add another multiply node and then get that multiply node and attach it to this one. And what's that going to do is that it's going to just hide some of that noise and, and show some of it. And again, adding more variety to the noise. Now you can see that some of it is showing, some of it is not. Yeah, we can scale it down. And that's pretty cool. Okay, let's copy this noise and let's add some variety to the roughness and uh, bump. So I'm going to try and plug this projection. Got it. Let's add a transform node and let's plug it into the roughness node. And I'm just going to play around. Let's solo this, scale it down. Let's add a gradient node and just make it less white. Nice. Okay. Let's play around with the gamma. Let's also make the black not fully black. And that's going to give us some variety on the on the roughness. And already we're looking pretty good. Let's copy this this circular noise. Try and get that projection in. Got it. And let's plug that into the bump channel. And this is too much bump. So let's add a gradient node first and let's play with the gamma and just crank the black all the way up so we just get a little bit of white specks here and there. You can scale it up. And maybe crank up the contrast and reduce the gamma. Now the, the specks are less dense. And this is looking really good. So let's invert the gradient node so the specks are black and the rest is white. And if we see how it looks, Look at that. Ah, oh, this is so good. 
this looks actually really realistic yeah this looks amazing it's a bit too much for me but the bump now looks really good so let's just reduce the contrast on the bump maybe we'll make the white 50 percent gray and yeah that really toned it down beautiful beautiful this is it this is this is the main idea so now we can play with it so let's copy this texture put it on the on the object and let's get rid of some nodes here so we can kind of uh, get a, a slightly different style so we're not going to use the c4d noise oh look how cool this looks but no so i'm going to show you a different technique this time i'm going to add an octane noise plug that into the amount and let's solo it let's plug the texture projection to it and let's solo cool now we're going to change it to chips and crank up the contrast and let's play with the scale nice and what i like about the octane noise is that all the chips are not as perfect as the cinema 4d noise here i can play with the omega and the octaves and it basically distorts the texture more which is more realistic the problem is that we can't control the color of each piece because all the pieces are white there is no way to get each piece to be colored differently so a way to get some kind of a color variation on the chips is to add another noise that's just going to be spread randomly right so if i add like a cinema 4d noise and let's change the color of our kind of of the background to maybe something more black and let's scale it down yeah nice Ooh, so beautiful okay so now i've added a cinema 4d noise here and let's choose something a bit more chaotic and detailed so maybe something like that and i want to get like a lot of kind of swirly details and to do that i'm going to up the cycles and as you can see it adds these streaks and swirls and we crank down the global scale and let's solo the gradient let's change the the, the colors in this one let's make them way brighter and more vibrant something like this yeah and let's add more detail so maybe up the cycles to four and sometimes checking the absolute adds more detail i guess not not in this example let's actually bring the scale up to 90 and yeah now you can see that we're getting some kind of variation it's not a uniform variation so it's still you can control each part but you get these streaks kind of move in i don't know this is a beautiful look i think and we can add another like light lighter node and use that little circle to push the pink node all the way to the cream node to get a harsher transition and maybe Add some kind of a darker color at the very left. Yeah. I mean, it's not the most realistic, but I think it's it's amazing. Let's bring that detail streaky noise that we added on the first one. Let's bring it back. Let's delete this one. And let's play with the octaves. Oh, that's fine. Let's change the color a little bit. yeah this is really nice i don't know if you can see let me zoom in yeah i don't know if you can tell you can see those tiny streaks they're really beautiful let me let me crank up the whites so they're a bit more accentuated yeah that's what i'm talking about like those details really help sell it and another thing i can do is i can bump up these large pieces so i can add a add node and drag the the chips noise the big one the one that's responsible for those big pieces plug it into the add node maybe add a gradient node in between let's plug our bump map into the add node as well and plug that into the bump and now you can see that we're bumping up the node let's make the gradient more extreme let's change it to, to a dark gray so it's it's pretty subtle maybe a bit brighter yeah it's subtle but again it adds uh it adds more detail and I mean, you know, you can also try and displace it, but eh, I wouldn't suggest it. I tried to kind of displace it, but it's just it's so subtle that you don't want to really use displacer here unless you're really trying to push the, those pieces out. Yeah, nah. Cool. So, so this is another technique, which I think is really beautiful. And, you know, we can try another technique even. I mean, it's all using the same idea, but maybe we want something a bit more clean. Uh, maybe something that is a bit 
uh, less marbly and more stone based. So let's copy our first material because I want to use the system with the C4D noises. And let's change the background color to something like a, a darker green. And let's change our pieces color to something way brighter and more creamy. Yeah. And now I want to add way more uniform bump. So if I just scale down the noise and unify the, the gamma, because uh, this is not really marbly, this is not polished, this is more of a, of a rock texture, almost like concrete texture. Now you can see all that bump really made it way rougher. That's pretty cool. And what I can also do is I can, for example, plug the our piece noise, pieces noise to the specular. And now the background is not doesn't have any specular in it. And the pieces uh, do have, are kind of shiny and have specular. But I don't want the background to not have any specular at all. So maybe 60% gray. And as you can see now, uh, the background has specular that's way toned down and the pieces are a bit more shiny. Maybe let's crank up the contrast on those pieces and scale down the noise on the background. Cool. And we can try and add um, this noise to the bump, but for some reason, the bump map won't register the Cinema 4D noises. I think it has to do with the fact that they're not baked because we told uh, in the settings for Octane not to bake the Cinema 4D stuff. So it's kind of not registering. I don't I don't understand why, but it is what it is. We can do without it. And uh, let's bring the scale down of our noise, both of the Cell Voronoi and the Voronoi 3. And, you know, you can play also with the high clip, low clip, and just get the spread and the, the look that you want of the pieces. Yeah. Really cool, maybe smaller pieces. Actually, let's make the specs on the background kind of cream color so they look like more tiny specs. So we get more different levels of scale of the pieces. Cool. And we don't even need all this extra detail, honestly. So we can just plug the all this uh, mix node straight to the albedo. And I want to change the color of the pieces a little bit. And yeah. That looks so good to me. Ah, this is so fucking good. And look at that. Beautiful, simple, beautiful. You can just save those textures and use them whenever you want. And, you know, you can always change the colors and the detail and all that. Super easy. And, you know, you can also buy the Terrasso pack on my Gumroad. I got uh, many more styles and looks. And I got also tiles and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, all procedural, fully procedural. Not a single image texture was used in this uh, in this pack. So, also, you know, check out my Patreon. Now you can go and do that. Uh, become a patron. Uh, get all the good stuff that the patrons get. Or become a YouTube paid subscriber. It's up to you. It's all the same prices and the same perks. So, it's up to you. And that's it. Hope you have a good day. I love you. Peace.